in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Surely he has borne our griefs, yet we esteemed him stricken, but he was wounded for our transgressions. All we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Please kneel for the confession. Let us therefore go to our Lord, confident of his grace and mercy. Our Heavenly Father, we are by nature sinful and are entirely lost. O people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand, surely for Jesus' sake, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. As a called and ordained servant of the risen Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love.
be with you. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The reading from the Old Testament is recorded in the, letter, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 1 to 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is a name by which he will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is recorded in the book of Ephesians. One minute. Are you going to be singing now? Okay, I'm sorry.
The epistle reading for this Sunday is recorded in Ephesians chapter 2. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision, by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you are once, you who were once far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to one spirit, to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are built together into a dwelling place by, for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and, and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in, in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the, li 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 the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces of the fish, and those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible.
may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 4 where the Apostle Paul writes these words. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. Put off the old self, put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. That's our text. Dear friends of Jesus, in the news lately, we've been hearing a lot about people identifying in a lot of different ways. New Zealand has a biological man who identifies as a woman, and he's entered in the powerlifting division, the heavyweight division, of the Women's Olympics in Tokyo. In New Jersey, two biological boys who identify as girls entered the New Jersey State track meet. And these two biological boys who identify as girls took first and second place in the 100-meter dash. Both of them broke the state record. Now, I'm finally old enough to qualify for Medicare. But I wonder, I wonder if 10 years ago, if I had told the government I identify as a 65-year-old man. I wonder if I could have gotten Medicare back then. I'm thinking probably not. 
Sometimes people identify by something that they struggle with. A person might say, I'm an alcoholic, or I'm a gossip, or you fill in the blank. But if that person's a Christian, how could he identify himself in a more positive and accurate way? Well, in our text today, the Apostle Paul gives us the answer. We should identify in this way. We should say, I'm a Christian. Now, if we want to include our struggle with sin, we could say, I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, and I happen to struggle with abusing alcohol or abusing some other kind of thing. The Apostle Paul was a persecutor of the Christian church, but that's not how he identified himself. That was his former life. After Paul was brought to faith by Jesus himself, he understood that he had a new identity. He put off his old self and he put on his new self. Today we hear advice from Paul and really we hear this advice from God. You must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. You know, some people today think that they can speak their identity into existence. They don't want God to make the rules. They want to make the rules. They even want to make the rules concerning salvation. They might say, I identify as a good person. I identify as a person who deserves to go to heaven based on my own good works. But when they do that, when they identify as the master of their own life, well, they're still living in the futility of their minds. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul urges us, put off your old self and put on your new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. We Christians should identify in this way, We should say, I'm a child of God, sinner and saint, simultaneously. Because of that dual nature, we struggle in this life. We have a sinful nature, and because of that, we often fall into various kinds of sin. But at the same time, God's Spirit lives in us. As Christians, we want to do the things God wants us to do. But because of our sinful nature, we often fail. I'll tell you this, I never wake up in the morning and say, today I think I'll be a jerk. But sometimes I am anyway. Now Wilma Hines told me this morning, she said, at least today you weren't. And I said, Wilma, the day's not over yet. (laughs) So in this life we struggle. Even heroes of the faith struggled. In the Old Testament, in the book of 1 Kings, we hear about the struggles of Elijah. He had just had this tremendous spiritual victory where God sent down fire from heaven, consumed his offering, even melted the altar. And that was right after the prophets of Baal failed miserably. But right after that spiritual victory, the evil Queen Jezebel put Elijah wanted posters all over the country. And Elijah had to flee for his life. He went all the way south of Israel and camped out in the wilderness. And then he said something very un-Elijah-like. He prayed, Lord, I give up. Just take my life. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope you never get that discouraged. But if you do, I want you to listen how God intervened in the life of Elijah. The angel of the Lord came to Elijah and fed him for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord is the pre-incarnate Son of God. So the Son of God himself, face to face, helped Elijah survive on his way to Mount Sinai. What does that make you think of? It made me think of the 40 years where God provided manna for the children of Israel while they wandered in the wilderness. And in today's gospel reading, Jesus fed 5,000 men 
Now, if we include women and children, that group could have been as many as 20,000. I've got a question for you. Why did Jesus do that miracle? Did he really have to? Couldn't the people just have gone back to Bethsaida and had lunch with their families? That's kind of what the disciples suggested. But Jesus did that miracle. Now, why? Well, I think for a few reasons. Number one, I think he wanted those people to know that he was the very same God who fed the children of Israel for 40 years as they wandered in the wilderness. And I think he wanted them to remember that he's the very same God who fed Elijah for 40 days in the wilderness. I think another reason why he did it was so that the people could stay and listen to him and be fed by God's word. And the third reason is simply because he loved them. Well, God loves all people, but he has a special relationship with you, Christians, because you're his redeemed people. That's your new identity, child of God. I love how God says it in Isaiah 43, verse 1. He says, fear not. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. As a child of God, the Holy Spirit helps us to behave in new ways. We put off the old self and we put on the new self. And when we do that, it makes a difference in the way we live. It makes a difference in the world. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. There was a good man at my home church, Peace Lutheran Church in Saginaw, where I grew up. His name was Bob Schultz, and he was one of those guys that really let his light shine. He was the head of a small construction company, so small that he often worked side by side with his men. Bob treated those guys well. He was kind to them. He treated them with dignity and respect. But he had one guy that was working for him that always used God's name in vain. When he would spill paint or make a mistake, he would always call out, Jesus Christ. And that bothered Bob a lot. But he didn't want to give Jim a lecture, come across as holier than thou. So what he did is one time when he and Jim were working on the same house, right around the corner, Bob was working over on this side, Jim on this side. And Bob was painting, and he spilled a little bit of paint. And he called out, Jim Jones! Well, Bob was the boss, so Jim scrambled down the ladder, came around the house. Yeah, Bob, what do you need? Oh, nothing, Jim. I just spilled some paint. Well, Jim kind of looked at him funny and, okay, went back around the house and started working. About an hour later, Bob was pounding nails, and he hit his thumb accidentally. And you guessed it. He yelled it again, Jim Jones. Jim came scrambling down the ladder, came around the house. Yeah, Bob, what do you need? Oh, nothing, Jim. I just, uh, I just hit my thumb with a hammer. Sorry. Well, this time Jim gave him the stink eye. But he went around the house and started working again. About a half an hour later, Bob accidentally spilled some nails. Jim Jones. This time Jim was angry. He came down the ladder, came around the house. Yeah, Bob, what do you want? Oh, nothing, Jim. I just spilled some nails. Now, Jim felt he had to say something this time. So he said, Bob, if you don't want me, stop calling my name. And that was Bob's chance. He looked Jim straight in the eye and said, okay, Jim, but if you don't want Jesus, would you please stop using his name? And from then on, Jim's language improved. When you identify as a child of God, it's important that you start behaving in new ways. If you don't, why should anybody listen to you? Don't have a bumper sticker on the back of your car that says Jesus loves you or a Christian fish symbol on the back of your car and then proceed to give someone the one finger salute when they cut in on you in traffic. It's a bad witness. Paul writes, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such is good for building up 
as fits the occasion, that it may be a, give grace to those who hear. And Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. Well, we do love Jesus, and we identify as his children. When I used to go out with my friends in high school, my dad didn't say, Jim, don't do this, don't do this, and don't do that. He simply said, Jim, remember who you are. It was genius. And for me, it really worked. Our identity is in Christ. But isn't it amazing that God himself came down from heaven and identified as one of us, albeit without sin. Jesus came down from heaven, humbled himself, was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life for us. He spent time around sinners 2,000 years ago. But guess what? He still spends time around us, and he's going to do it today, in, with, and under, bread and wine in his body and blood. Jesus identifies with us, his redeemed children. When God looks at a Christian, it's kind of like this white robe I'm wearing. If you can imagine this being Jesus. When God looks at someone who is in Christ, he doesn't really see that person's sin anymore. He sees Jesus. And it's like the Apostle Paul wrote in Colossians 1.22. For those who are in Christ, we are holy in his sight without blemish, and free from accusation. So when you say, I identify as a person who is holy in God's sight, you're not kidding. That's a true statement. And it makes all the difference in the way that you live your life and in the perspective that you have on life. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. I'm but a stranger here. Heaven is my home. Earth is a desert drear. Heaven is my home. Danger and sorrow stand round me on every hand. Heaven is my fatherland. Heaven is my home. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God which goes beyond human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Welcome to Historic Trinity today. We're glad that you're here to worship the Lord together with us. And uh, Carl, that was just some beautiful music. Uh, thank you for that. Um, Carl wrote that, and uh, that was inspiring to me. And thank you also to the choir for the an beautiful anthem today. Just a few announcements this morning. We're praying that uh, all of you and your loved ones made it safe through the storm last night. I know for Cheryl and me, we were babysitting two of our grandsons, and we spent some of the time last night in the basement, but it kind of went around our house, so we're thankful for that. Next Bible class will be on August 8th at 9.30, and in our prayers this morning, we include Colin Jones, Carl Toko, Andrew Gordon, Pastor Herzog, Bob Caldwell, Ed Christian, Cindy Roman, Donna Goddard, Barb Asmus, and the families and firemen dealing with the fires that are going on in Washington State. Please rise for prayer. Dear Father, through the prophet Jeremiah you said, it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And therefore, we come to you through Jesus Christ for mercy, that we might find grace to help in time of need. Lord, in your mercy, guide all who lead in government, that your will might be done and we might be blessed. Lord, in your mercy, watch over and protect those through whom you protect and care for us, the military, law enforcement officers, first responders, and firefighters, especially those battling the raging fires out west. Lord, in your mercy, be a very present help in trouble to parents and children facing difficulties, homes endangered by crime and violence, families fleeing fire, floods, and tornadoes, believers being persecuted, and the hungry, and the homeless. Lord, in your mercy, move with your spirit men and women to serve you in your church, that the lost might be found. Lord, in your mercy, speak a word of healing for all who are suffering in body or spirit, those that we always worry about. as well as those we have named, Colin, Carl, Andrew, Pastor Herzog and Marlene, Bob, Ed, Cindy, Donna, and Barbara, that they may receive your help in time of need. We thank you for your never failing mercies, O Lord. Hear us now while we pray as your son taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is our Good Shepherd, providing feasts of blessings during our earthly sojourn until we celebrate the marriage fe feast of the Lamb in His kingdom, which has no end. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Your glorious name, evermore praising You and saying,
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please rise. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith, the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Gracious God, you daily and richly supply all that we need to support our life on every level. And in this feast of your Son's body and blood, you have multiplied blessing upon blessing. Accompany us on our journey through this desert until we join saints and angels to praise your holy name on days without number. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace.